In this patient, the middle and ring fingers of the left hand are joined together. This is termed as syndactyly. The flexion and extension movements of the fingers are normal and functionally there is no deficiency. However, for cosmetic reasons, the patient may opt for separation of the fingers. Syndactyly is termed as simple if it involves only the soft tissues and complex if the bones are involved. In this patient, the terminal phalanges are bent towards each other and cannot be moved independently. The X-ray shows that the bones are closely opposed with a fibrous joint between them. So this is a complex syndactyly. Syndactyly commonly involves two adjacent fingers, but sometimes it may affect more than two. In this patient, we can see syndactyly of three fingers, middle, ring and little. Also, it is affecting both hands. Syndactyly may affect multiple limbs, in which case often it is bilaterally symmetrical. In the next patient, you can see syndactyly of great toe, second and third toes. Syndactyly of the smaller toes does not merit any treatment. However, syndactyly between great toe and second toe usually needs to be separated to facilitate the use of chapels and suitable footwear. This was syndactyly or joint fingers. Whenever the deep reflexes of the lower leg, that is ankle jerk and knee jerk are exaggerated, you must test for ankle clonus. Standing on the right side of the patient, lift the leg with your left hand under the knee and grasp the foot with the right hand. Now briskly dorsiflex the foot with slight eversion and keep it gently pressed. There is a clonic repetition of the ankle jerk due to rhythmic contraction of the calf muscles. Recurring as long as pressure is maintained on the foot. This is called ankle clonus. Clonus is a rhythmic and repetitive contraction of a muscle stimulated through the mechanism of stretch reflex. If the clonus keeps on recurring as long as the pressure is maintained on the sole of the foot, it is termed as true clonus or sustained clonus. If after 3 to 4 jerks the clonus stops, in spite of the pressure being maintained, then it is termed as false clonus or abortive clonus or pseudoclonus. This was a case of true or sustained clonus. Observe the middle finger of this lady as she first clenches her fist and then releases it. The middle finger cannot be extended and then with some excess effort, it extends with a snap. Sometimes, a little assistance may be needed from the other hand. But note how the extension occurs with a jerk, very much like the trigger of a gun which has a resistance till the bullet is fired. This condition is termed as trigger finger. This lady has a problem in kneading the dough when her finger gets locked. It results from narrowing of the sheath of the flexor tendon of the finger. The tendon just distal to the constriction becomes swollen like a nodule. The flexor muscles being powerful can pull it across the constriction with ease. But the extensors being weak, their force is insufficient and the extension is blocked. With continued efforts or with some assistance, the swollen tendon gets forced through the constricted sheath and then the finger extends quickly, very much like the action of a carom player. This condition most commonly affects middle or ring fingers in middle-aged female patients. Now palpate over the head of the metacarpal. A nodular thickening may be palpable 
in the flexor tendon at the site of narrowing. An early case may be cured by local hydrocortisone injection. Other cases will need surgical slitting of the fibrous sheath to relieve the constriction. This was a trigger finger.